Hello and welcome. Our today topic is lung diseases, acute respiratory viral infections, and infections of childhood and some special infections. First of all, we should start from normal anatomy of a lung. Uh, in normal condition, lung consists from two main lungs, from left one and right one. Left lung consists of two lobes and the right one consists of three lobes it's lower upper and middle lobe in left lobe in left lung we can see only lower and upper one and in this part uh, we can see heart in normal conditions also very important part of uh, respiratory tract is uh, bronchus the main bronchus and trachea uh, the most important uh, functional unit of the lung is or are alveoli. Alveoli it's a small formation with a lot of vessels and very thin uh, wall and the most important function of alveoli is gas exchange. And on this slide you may see scheme of uh, alveoli construction. On histological level we can see a lot of different formation in the lungs. We are the main bronchus, bronchial lie, and alveoli. The difference between bronchus and bronchial lie is the presence of cartilages. So you may see it on this part of the slide and this one, and you couldn't find any um, chondros, chondrical fissures in the bronchial lies. Uh, the most important characteristics of alveoli is very thick thin um, walls of it and uh, the empty spaces of them. So all necessary formations you may see in this part of the slide. Uh, on this histological photo we may see a um, typical histological picture of healthy lungs and we can see a lot of uh, alveoli here with empty spaces and uh, the wall of them are very thick uh, thin, uh, the size of uh, or layers of uh, alveoli's wall consist of only one layer of cells. Also, we can see some vessels here, uh, or sometimes we may see some bronchus and so on. So, uh, the slide about functions of the lung it's not only gas exchange, but sometimes uh, lungs may uh, took a part, take a part in. Uh, water exchange processes, uh, oncotic pressure regulations, and some some other the more, very important functions. One of the special formations which lung or special secrets which lungs produced is uh, mucose. Mucus in lung uh, have some uh, very important functions. Uh, it protects our lungs from small parts which we may see. Uh, in the air uh, and it collects the dust, collects the smoke and all other abnormal particles of the, in the air and uh, it leads to cl clearance of uh, air and uh, it's necessary for gas exchange uh, function. Diseases of the respiratory system. First of all we should talk about uh, general processes and after it we will discuss uh, the special diseases, uh, some infectional diseases, and so on. Uh, the first uh, common pathological process is atelectasis. Atelectasis or constriction of a lung may have two um, etiological uh, processes or two etiological factors. Uh, it may be caused by liquid accumulation or accumulation of air. So, in case of air accumulation, we should talk about. Uh, pneumo, uh, flu, uh, pl pl pneumothorax. In case of uh, liquid accumulation, we should talk about heterothorax. So, uh, and on this slide, you may see scheme of these formations. Uh, histologically, uh, the uh, constriction of the lung tissue will looks like this area, and in this area, we can see closer to normal lung uh, tissues, but it have also changed in result of constriction. 
emphysema is the next pathological process and it opposite to previous one. It associated with accumulation of a lot of air in the alveoli and it may be associated with rupture of alveoli uh, wall and uh, with accumulation of a lot of air in the alveoli and it associated with increase of volume of alveoli and rupture of its wall. Pulmonary edema, the next pathological uh, process which may happen in all um, pulmonary diseases and it accumulation, uh, associated with accumulation of fluids in the uh, lumen of alveoli. Uh, it will look like that and we can see some liquids and uh, proteins in the lumen of alveoli, like in this slide. And uh, um, the typical pathological process, one of the most common of them, is pneumonia. Pneumonia is inflammatory change of uh, lungs and uh, we will discuss uh, different manifestation of pneumonia and different type of, this, of them later. But uh, all of them associated with accumulation of exudate in the alveoli uh, and uh, it associated with not only with um, exudate or, or accumulation of fluid, but also it associated with accumulation of some special cells in it. Uh, pneumonia, one of the most common respiratory diseases and um, uh, really uh, popular uh, among patients in uh, all worlds. And uh, pneumonia is one uh, of the most common diseases worldwide. Uh, in Russia, for example, it uh, uh, something about 10 or 15 cases for 1,000 people every year uh, have these diagnoses. Uh, pneumonia is the first disease among the cause of death from human infection or diseases. It's one of the most typical infection. And, uh, uh, it uh, has it have six place among all causes of death in population in Russia and third place among cause of death in the United States. So it's uh, have leading positions in all world. So, uh, and also today we should uh, note that um, we can see increase of mortality from uh, community acquired pneumonias. Uh, for example, in uh, coronavirus infection, we can see also pneumonia development as complication of this infection or disease. Uh, one of the most uh, important um, clinical or clinical morphological classification of pneumonia include three main types of them. They are lobral pneumonia, bronchial pneumonia, and interstitial pneumonia. All of them have some special manifestation, special causes, and also all of them have special treatment. Today we will talk only about morphological manifestation all of them, and on other departments you will discuss their treatment. Uh, but uh, you also should know uh, clinical classification of pneumonias. We may be community acquired pneumonia and these old pneumonias which detected up to eight, uh, 48 hours after um, hospitalization and nosocomial uh, pneumonias which diagnosis after the uh, 48 hours. Also we should remember about pneumonia in people with several immune defects it not only uh, HIV infection but also uh, it may be pneumonias in elderly patients and pneumonia in the uh, childhood. Now we have uh, some special manifestations, special um, characteristics of uh, course and so on. And one of the most, uh, one of the important types of pneumonia are aspirative type of pneumonia. Lobar pneumonia uh, have a lot of different names. It may uh, called like lobar pneumonia, crupus pneumonia, or pleura pneumonia, or uh, large size pneumonia. Uh, on this slide we may see uh, changed lung and uh, uh, the typical manifestation of it 
is uh, changes of huge area of the lung tissues. Etiological factors of pneumonia uh, are infectional disease. In, uh, in lobar pneumonia is infectional disease and mostly associated with microbacteria. For example, it may be uh, pneumococcus of all types, but most typical are pneumococcus of third type. And also it may uh, be associated with Klebsiella infections. The typical way of spreading is air, uh, air and uh, this infection is airborne. Uh, the typical age of manifestation is middle age, something about 30 or 50 years old. Uh, some factors which may promote the infection are alcohol intoxication, cooling, anesthesia, toxins and poisonings. It based on the immediate hypersensitivity reaction and uh, the development of all pathological processes, which we will discuss in the next slide, are associated with some uh, hypersensitivity reaction uh, or reaction of protection of our organism against the infection. Pathogenesis includes four stages, and all the development of all these stages took something about uh, 10 days. Uh, the first stage is stage of rising type and it characterized by edema and hyperemia of the lung. The second stage is stage of red liver-like induration or sometimes they talk like uh, red uh, hepatinization of the lung. Uh, in this stage we may see accumulation of erythrocytes in gland tissue and lung become solid and have a red color. In the third stage, stage of gray liver-like induration, we can see accumulation of leukocytes in the uh, lung tissue. And the fourth stage is stage of outcome. In the outcome, we should talk about two different ways of it. Uh, it may be favorable outcome associated with fully healing of the process and some uh, complications of this disease. On this slide we may see healthy lung tissues, empty spaces of alveoli. Uh, the wall of alveoli is really thick, thin, uh, so uh, on this slide we may see histological picture of healthy lung. On this slide we may see a macroscopical picture of healthy lung. We become pink color and uh, we have very mm, soft consistency and uh, so it's typical characteristics of it. On this slide we may see changed lung and we can see some areas with inflammation here and in this slide we may see pathological process in this area. In this area we can see uh, solid tissues and accumulation of exudate. On histological level we can see accumulation of exudate in the alveoli lumen and some uh, inflammatory reaction in the wall of alveoli. All of these manifestations you may see with here. One more picture with manifestation of this pathological process. We can see accumulation of exudate here and all manifestation of inflammatory reaction here. On this slide you can see stage of red hepatinization and stage of gray hepatinization or uh, stage uh, which associated with accumulation of fresh erythrocytes and we can see red lung here and we can see gray lung here. On this slide we can see mistake in this uh, head headline. Uh, it's, uh, we are, this is the second and the third stage because the first stage is stage of tide. On this slide we can see uh, stage of gray hepatinization or gray liver-like induration and we can see accumulation of neutrophils and fibrils, uh, fibrils in the uh, lumen of alveoli. Complications of uh, pneumonia may be pulmonary and extrapulmonary. Uh, if we talk about pulmonary complications, we should remember about carnification of the lung and carnification of the lung associated with overgrowing of connective tissue and organization of fibrinose exudate. 
Uh, the next complication is formation of lung abscesses and abscesses of the lung uh, it's uh, cavities with subtle sub in the um, in the inflammatory area the next complication is gangrene of the lung and i hope you remember about a uh, special type of necrosis gangrene and uh, in result of gangrene uh, we can see a lung uh, with black color and uh, the consistent will be very solid and they looks like very dry and one more typical complication is pleural empyema empyema it's one of the type of separative inflammation which is hit with accumulation of sap in normal cavities of our body for example in pleural empyema we can see accumulation of sap in pleural cavity i will see i will show you uh, the, all of these manifestations extra pulmonary complication are may be different and the way uh, the morphological manifestations of them associated with a way of spreading of infection in case of lymphogenetic uh, generalization of infection we may see separative mediastinitis with injury of heart uh, for example esophagus mm, trachea and so on pericarditis also in case of hematogenic generalization of one of the um, worst type of uh, mm, complications and worst type of prognosis we can see purulent meningitis abscesses in the brain uh, polypose ulcerative endocarditis peritonitis and purulent arthritis uh, this is one of the most difficult complications of uh, in, of uh, pneumonia and we associate with one of the worst type of um, injury on this slide we may see formations of abscess in the lung so you can see this cavity here and here and uh, uh, abscesses associated with lesions of lung tissue and formation of cavities with sub in the lung on this slide we may see in PM of pleura and we can see uh, pleural cavity here and accumulation of sub in it uh, so you can see uh, lesions of the lung tissues here and it's really difficult complications or complication of pneumonia and uh, it may lead to death of patient bronchial pneumonia or focal pneumonia or small size pneumonia uh, this is an inflammation of the lung uh, that develops in connection with uh, bronchi bronchitis or bronchiolitis and it has some special features uh, the first of all it's partly etiological and it may have cell uh, bacterial and non-bacterial factors it may have different amount, amount of damage and uh, the typical characteristics of this disease uh, is mm, that this disease is more often is secondary uh, and uh, bronchial pneumonia more often is a combination of some other type or other uh, disease mechanism of its development is aspiration hypostasis post alterative uh, pneumonias hematogenous pneumonias in case of generalization of some other diseases and immunodeficient type of mm, pneumonias etiological factors may be biological and non-biological biological factors of pneumonia may be pneumococcus staphylococcus streptococcus mycoplasmas fungus and so on uh, chemical factors more often uh, bronchial pneumonia associated with uremia and uremia may be result of uh, some kidney disorders and uh, diseases of kidney physical factors may be associated with dust particles and radiation uh, but it not only these uh, pathological factors may lead to formation of bronchial pneumonia but they are the most common the amount of damage or a size of damage also may be different 
uh, it may be miliary, atenose, lobural, confluent, segmental, and polysegmental. Miliary type of damage associated with size is less than 5 mm. Atenose and lobural and all other associated with anatomical di uh, disease or an anatomical injury of size of anatomical part. So in case of atenose, we can see damage of atenose only. In lobural type, we can see lobural disease uh, disorders. Confluent, we can see a lot of lobes. Segmental, we can see segment of damage. And polysegmental, we can see a lot of segments with damage. Uh, pathological anatomy and manifestation, microscopical manifestation of disease associated with different pathogenical factors. So, in different uh, etiology, we can see different size and manifestation of disease. Uh, so, we can see different nature of exudate. It, it will be de uh, depends from uh, type of etiological factors. Uh, but microscopically, the typical manifestation of bronchial pneumonia is motley lung. Uh, motley lung uh, characterized by uh, very di different features, and uh, we can see uh, some areas with light color and area with dark color. So all area with light color will be associated with infectious or inflammatory proteins, uh, and. It's really important to understand that mm, the manifestation of bronchial pneumonia may be different. It may localize with minimal changes, like in this slide we may see on the edema of the lung. Uh, so, but in the next slide we may see also bronchial pneumonia, and we can see uh, difficult virulent inflammation in the alveoli with um, atelectasis and. Uh, some inflammatory proteins here. Also, we can see uh, accumulation of Gibeon cells and uh, cells of different uh, the different cells of inflammatory uh, part. Uh, on this slide, we can see uh, fungus in the lung, and uh, we can see pneumonia, which is associated with fungus infections. And sometimes we can see uh, formation of Gibeon cells in the lung in result of bronchial pneumonia. So you can see the simplest of the mm, in the lung. Complications uh, will be same. We can see carnification, lung abscesses, we can see gangrene of the lung and pruzy and empyema of fluid. On this slide we can see formation of abscess in the lung. So we can see uh, accumulation of neutrophils, and we can see also formation of the wall of abscess in this uh, area. Also, we can see uh, involvement of pleura in the pathological process, and we can see MPM of pleura. And also, uh, in this part of the slide, we can see MPM of pleura with accumulation of sub uh, neutrophils in the pleural cavity. And also in the lung, we can see atelectasis, uh, and uh, it will lead to constriction of lung tissues and may lead to some other complications. Atypical pneumonia or acute interstitial pneumonia or acute pneumonitis. Uh, etiological factors of this disease more common are virus, megaplasma, legionella, fungus, or uh, some unknown causes. Pathogenesis, defeat of alveolocytes of first and second order. Immediate type of uh, hypertensive reaction and uh, delayed type hypertensive reaction. Morphologically, we can see accumulation of protein fluid in the lumen of alveoli, hyaline membranes, polymorphic nuclear leukocytes, and macrophages. The next pathological process which should be discussed today is lung cancer. Uh, lung cancer really a uh, common disease nowadays and uh, it took the first place from uh, all tumoral diseases in both, ma uh, of, in both uh, male in the um, population. So, uh, by according to localization, we can see central peripheral mixed type of the lung cancer. 
by type of row we can see exothetic and endothetic. Uh, we can see also different anatomical forms uh, like plague-like, polypose, and the brachial, nodular, and branched type of cancer. Uh, if we talk about uh, risk factors, we should uh, remember about smoking. And something about 80% of smokers with um, duration of smoking more than 20 years will have uh, lung cancer. Occupation hazard may be asbestosis, radiation, printing blockers, and uh, all other some abnormal particles in the air. So, Lung cancer may be associated not only with smoking, but with bad uh, environment condition. Lung cancer uh, may have metastasis in the brain, liver, bones, and so on. And it may have different histological variants, which you may see on this slide, like squamous cell cancer, adenocarcinoma, small cell cancer, microcellular cancer, glandular squamous cell, and so on. And uh, about uh, ways of metastatic approaches, I have already told you. On this slide, we may see different variants of central cancer. We can see a uh, node of cancer here and here. It's central cancer because it's localized around the port of lung. So all tumors which localized in the port of lung will code like central. Uh, on this slide we may see peripheral type of cancer because it localized on the periphery of the lung. So the difference uh, between these type of tumors will be associated with source of growth. In type of central cancer most often it will be uh, cells of bronch bronchus. In this uh, type, we can see a uh, source of, growth, of tumor growth in the alveoli. On this slide, we may see different uh, histological variants of uh, lung cancer. We are adenocarcinoma, microcellular cancer, uh, adenocarcinoma, microcellular, microcellular cancer, and squamous cell cancer. All of them uh, may be localized in the lung. The next uh, group of disease which we will discuss today are acute respiratory viral infections. And uh, you may see a list of them on this slide. We are influenza, parainfluenza, adenovirus, respiratory syncytial infection, and coronavirus infection also. Influenza. Influenza is airborne um, viral infection uh, and etiological factors of it is RNA virus, a different group uh, of it, and you may see it on the slide. The incubation period of influenza is something about three days, and uh, the source of infection is infected person. Pathogenesis. Uh, the step of pathogenesis of influenza are really important and you should know that uh, it starts from absorption on, of the virus on epithelial cells and after that we may see penetration into the cell and reproduction of the virus. After that we may see cytopathic action with the development of dystrophy and necrosis of epithelial cells and after it we can see peeling of them. And after this process, we can see secondary viremia and spreading of virus in all organisms. And we can see immunosuppressive infection and inhibition of protective properties of organism. Clinically, we can see three uh, different forms of uh, influenza. The first of them is easy. Uh, form and easy form characterized by a uh, short course, something about one week, and uh, the type of uh, inflammation is cateral, and we may see cateral changes in the uh, larynx, trachea, and bronchials. Um, moderated severity, it's second type of 
uh, form or second form of uh, influenza and uh, the duration of it something about 30 days and we can see serous hemorrhagic inflammation in the trachea, bronchus and lung tissues. On this slide we may see typical uh, histological man uh, manifestation of influenza associated with hemorrhagic component of exudate, so serous hemorrhagic inflammation. And server form may have two subforms. It may be uncomplicated or toxic form and complicated form. And uncomplicated form uh, with severe intoxication of a body and the toxic intoxication will be leading symptom of this influenza. Complicated form associated with some additions of uh, additionary infections of bacterial flora and macroscopically we can see large motley lung microscopically we can see serous hemorrhagic purulent or uh, exudate hemorrhages atelectasis and focus of acute emphysema on the lung complications of a, uh, influenza associated with carnification abscess formation purulent pyrrhosis empyema of pleura Purulent mediastinitis, chronic obstructive emphysema, meningitis, encephalitis, hemorrhagic stroke, and so on. On this slide, we may see a lung in uh, influenza. We can see uh, some hemorrhagic area in the lung. Histologically, we can see accumulation of erythrocytes in the lung tissue here and here. So it's typical characteristics of infection of uh, influenza infection like a serous hemorrhagic type of inflammation in the lung one more microscopical photo para influenza uh, it's uh, infectional disease viral infectional disease which looks like uh, influenza but have lighter course uh, it's something about 10 percent of all uh, acute respiratory viral infections. The source of infection is infected person and its serology is RNA containing virus. Uh, the pathogenesis is similar to influenza, less pronounced intoxication, uh, and the typical patients are children under the three years old and more likely they are more likely to get sick. Uh, clinically it characterized cough Hornness of voice, subfibrillatory of temperature, several running nose, and headache. Often edema of larynx or formation of false group, and this false group may lead to uh, asphyxi uh, asphyxia and lead to death of this young patient. Uh, in pathological anatomy, we should note cathedral laryngotracheitis, tracheobronchitis, proliferation of epithelial cells with the formation of pillow-like overgrowth, complications when join a bacterial infection. So we can see development of secondary pneumonias in result of uh, parainfluenza. Uh, respiratory syncytial infection or RS infection are uh, more typical for child uh, children and the etiology of it is RNA virus. Um, features of pathogenesis the process being uh, with small bronchies and lungs. Possible generalization of infection, especially in children in the first month of life. Pathological anatomy characterized by cateral lung bronchiobronchitis, bronchiolitis, small focal bronchopneumonia, and uh, formation of simplest this is huge cells with a lot of nucleus here and complications possible with the addition of bacterial flora adenovirus infection this is an acute respiratory disease which characterized by damage the upper respiratory tract connectiva lymphoid tissue of the pharynx and larynx intestinal uh, and abdominal lymph nodes 
uh, this adenovirus infection is the second place of all acute respiratory viral infection and it took something about 25-30% of all infections uh, in population. More often uh, you may see this uh, infectional disease in children with the melt of epidemic outbreaks. In pathological anatomy we can see a different um, manifestation. In white form we can see cateral vena laryngitis, uh, cateral pharyngitis, conjunctivitis, hyperplasia of lymphoid tissue. And the, one of the most typical features is increase of nucleus due to an accumulation of DNA uh, of adenovirus in cell. So we can see these cells with huge nuclei. And histologically, it's really um, elective manifestation of this disease. On this slide, we may see conjunctivitis in the result of uh, this infection. Several form is generalization of viral infections and a section of bacterial flora. Damage to intestinal epithelial, liver, parenchymas, exical duct, liver tubes. In parenchymal organs, we can see dystrophy and interstitial inflammation. Complications may be associated with development of otitis, sinusitis, angina, pneumonia, and so on. The next disease should be discussed today uh, is malaria. Malaria is protozoa uh, and its um, source is plasmodium. We can see different uh, types of plasmodium and they will be associated with different types of malaria. All of them you may see on the slide. It's a really uh, interesting and really important disease because every year something about 25 uh, to 250 thousand millions people uh, have, are affected by malaria and some or something about 1 million of them are died. A life cycle of Plasmodium, you may see on this slide, and it's really important to understand that one of the most part of life cycle is uh, Anopheles. Anopheles uh, is the special source and the source of spreading and source of infections of malaria, and uh, uh, it's really important for development of this. So, all um, areas we, in which Anopheles may be localized, we may see uh, malaria. So, it's South Africa, some uh, countries with tropic climates, and some middle uh, area of our planet. Clinical manifestation of malaria will depend on uh, type of malaria also, and we can see uh, different periods of it. Uh, we can see incubation period for malaria may be different for all, for different types. Uh, in Vivox, so you may see it in the slide. Uh, manifestation of malaria will be associated with headache, fever, wet cough, splenomegaly, molotin, uh, gear, and so on. Morphological manifestation will be associated with formation of special pigment, hemomelanin, and we have already discussed it in our previous class. We can see accumulation of hemomelanin in the liver, spleen, lymph nodes, and bone marrow, and all these organs become gray or black in color. General hemosiderosis, gendarmes, uh, stasis, diapetesis, and hemorrhages, glomerulonephritis, and anemia cells. On this slide we may see uh, spleen in Mallory and uh, you may see the color of it it is gray and it's gray because of accumulation of mm, special pigment so hemomelanin uh, accumulation of hemomelanin in uh, histological level uh, you may see accumulation of it here in these areas complications of Mallory may be different it may be malaria coma infection and toxic shock, hemoglobinuria fever, 
uh, glomerular nephritis, uh, chronic coarse amyloidosis. On uh, blood examination, we can see accumulation of plasmodium in the uh, erythrocytes. You may see it here. The next disease is rabies. Rabies is a acute infection disease which is characterized by damage of central nervous system. It is anthropozoonosis. The source of infection is affected animal. Etiology. Pathogenesis is uh, rabies virus uh, from family of Rhabdoviridae. Uh, human infections occurs when sick animals beat them, uh, and these animals may be foxes, dogs, bats, uh, hedgehogs also. The entrance gate is skin wound, and uh, the, the V virus is neurotrophic. Something about 100% of rabies will lead to death. Something about uh, 100 with maybe 99 or 97%. Course of infection. We can see incubation period in first four days. The duration in the, of disease is one week. And the third period is period of paralysis. Uh, Prodromal period, duration something about three, uh, three, three days. Symptoms are burnings, ictics, swelling, redness of beat area. The uh, second period uh, characterized by duration in some days uh, he, and characterized by some psychological uh, manifestations like hydrophobia, aerophobia, photophobia, acoustic phobia, and so on and the last period associated with uh, paralysis and in the third period patient usually died. On this uh, slide you may see uh, microscopical manifestation of patient with rabies. One more photo. The most important morphological manifestation is uh, carpuscles of Bescher Negri. Uh, so it's uh, round as in epidic inclusions in the cytoplasm of cells of the hippocamp. And uh, one more photo with them you may see here. So with small round uh, accumulations in the uh, special cells. Infections of childhood. And today we should talk about dysuria, scarlatina, measles and meningococcal infection. Uh, common characteristics of all of them uh, airborne way, way of spreading, pronounced local, changed uh, pronunciation for epidemic, and wide circulation. Respiratory infections in childhood is acute uh, respiratory viral infections, diphtheria, scarlatina, uh, meningococcal infection, measles. Uh, rubella, parotitis, varicella. Uh, diphtheria. Diphtheria is an acute infectional disease characterized mainly by fibrinol's information in, at the site of the introduction of the infectious agent and serous intoxication. Etiology is uh, Lepreus bacillum or uh, carina bacteria of diphtheria and uh, the special uh, pathological mechanism of injury is diphtheritic toxin, exotoxin. Source or is either patient or bacteriological object, um, personal belongings. Uh, Enterous gate of the, is the mucose gate of mucosa of the upper respiratory tract, uh, and the incubation period something about five days. Uh, morphologically, we can see local change and common change. Local changes associated with uh, injury of upper respiratory tract. We can see uh, uh, injury of tonsils and we can see diptyritic inflammation, uh, intoxication uh, located on the tonsils and uh, we can see edema of uh, tonsils. Uh, and, um, in the larynx, we can see 
two poles inflammation and uh, formation of two croup in the tonsils we can see false two croup in the larynx we can see in the trachea and larynx we can see two croup uh, periods of diphtheria are this fun this funical it's first three days period of stenosis is uh, fourth and fifth day and uh, the last period is period of asphyxia and in the result of asphyxia patient usually died classification it's local group form, form, formation diffuse group formation and it may be longer tracheitis like your tracheobronchitis on this slide we may see pharynx with formation of croup here you can see this white area so it's typical for formation of inflammation and histologically we can see manifestation of uh, fibrinose inflammation in the pathological area one more photo with microscopical changes we can see edema of the tonsils here uh, we can see edema of larynx here uh, one more photo with uh, typical manifestation of uh, fibrinose inflammation one more photo which associated with uh, edema of neck and one more photo with it uh, on this slide we may see 10 years boys with several diphtheria and we see conjunctivitis uh, pharyngeal membrane but ball neck so we can see edema of neck also uh, mm, we can see myocarditis and all uh, the sash in the contribute uh, common changes associated with uh, toxin myocarditis arter alterative and interstitial neural system damage and typical damage is damage of vagus spinal nerves roots diaphragmatic uh, disorders adrenal glands disorders and we can see necrosis and hemorrhage in the embem and also we can see necrotic necrosis in the kidney so some manifestation of these processes you may see here so we can see hemorrhages we can see interstitial myocarditis one more photo with myocarditis and complications of diphtheria the bad source during to intubation because intubation one of way of treatment in case of diphtheria and only it may protect patient against asphyxia pneumonia glomerulonephritis also may be developed and glomerulonephritis will have subacute mostly subacute type and uh, will have really difficult complications to the patient and i hope you remember it from our class about kidney diseases cause of death in diphtheria uh, associated with asphyxia mostly because uh, blockation of respiratory drugs will lead to death of patient in some uh, minutes uh, heart failure diseases and the way associated with damage or toxin damage of the heart and uh, respiratory paralysis which associated with uh, damage of vagus scarlet fever scarlet fever this is an acute infection disease with local changes in the throat and extrema uh, uh, etiology factor is hemolytic streptococcus of group a and uh, the typical patient are uh, children uh, from 3 to 15 years old and uh, the typical way of spreading is air gain uh, pathogenesis of uh, scarlet fever uh, once of the mucosa of uh, the pathogen produce endotoxin uh, features change depend on the action of the endotoxins it develops scarlet fever passage uh, through two periods the first period is period of sensitization and the last period is autoimmune processes and it's really important to note that uh, the autoimmune processes are not common and we can see it in not 
in all cases. Morphological manifestation of first stage associated with changes in the fraud, local changes, which associate with hyperemia, we can see Fleming fraud, Christmas tongue, and cateral antenna with several cross necrotic and angina. Necrotic angina is a typical manifestation of scarlet fever. General changes. On second day, we can see rash, which based on edema, fullness, and focal lymphohistological infiltration. Later, on the side of the rash, we can see focal dystrophy and pedin. Uh, the cause of immunogenesis is hyperplasia. Head regeneration of myocardium and liver, brain edema, hemorrhages in the adrenal glands, uh, lamerial peeling of the epidermis on the skin of the hands and feet. So on this um, slide you may see view of typical patient with scarlet fever. You can see rash, you can see uh, age of the patient, so it's typical for it. One more photo. According to survey of a scarlet fever, we can see light, the average degree of gravity, uh, serous degree with mild uh, to moderated severity only the first period of the disease, and server uh, pharynx abscess, virulent otitis, phlegmon, and some atrial disease. According to prevalence of pathological processes, Toxin from uh, form may destinated by intoxication of organisms plus dystrophic changes, septic form, uh, the formation of purulent focus. Toxic septic form, also possible. Manifestation of second stage, uh, it's developed in not only, uh, in not everyone, and it uh, develops in three, five weeks, and it's characterized by development of infections and allerg allergic glomerular nephritis, arthritis, endocarditis, vasculitis, and sometimes it may look like uh, remotic diseases. Meningococcal infections, a disease caused by Neisseria meningitis uh, that uh, secretes endotoxin and uh, hyaluronidase. Children under five years of age suffer mainly the source of infections is the patient of carrier. Characteristics. He, uh, this disease characterized by intoxication, blood clotting disorders, and some other manifestations. I will show you. Forms of meningococcal infection. There are three main forms of it. Meningococcal nasopharyngitis, uh, meningococcal meningitis, and meningococcemia. There are also meningococcal pneumonia and encephalitis, but we usually use these three types. Meningococcal nasopharyngitis is free first day is cirrhosis meningitis. On uh, the third day, we can see neutrophilic leukocytes, purulent meningitis, and uh, we can see uh, encephalitis. Localization typical, it's frontal, parietal, and temporal lobes of the brain, and uh, uh, all of these uh, disorders form, formed purulent cup. Purulent meningoencephalitis can be cause of a death in the patient severed hydrocephalus. So, you may see typical symptoms of meningitis on the slide in the uh, lower part of the slide. More, uh, you will uh, discuss uh, this manifestation more in the department of neurotic diseases. Typical pose of uh, illness people. Uh, formation of separative cup. You can see some uh, separative inflammation here. And histologically, you can see accumulation of neutrophils in the brain. Meningococcemia will manifest itself um, by like sepsis and characterize hemorrhagic rush on the anterior surface of the uh, body in the internal organs hemorrhages. And we can see 
a Waterhouse Fringe uh, Syndrome, a specific complication. Uh, lightning's fast course in its first two days and death. One more microscopical manifestation of meningococcemia. You can see this area. Sometimes it may look like that, or that, like outcome of it. Waterhouse Friedland's syndrome associated with um, hemorrhage in the uh, adrenal glands. Misless. This is an acute, uh, highly contagious disease characterized by inflammation of the upper respiratory duct and present of a spot papular rash. So you can see. And um, the typical anatomical formation is spots of filatov coplic. Pathogenesis of melesness is airborne virus enteritis, uh, interns the mucous membranes of the upper respiratory tract. Inflammation occurs when the virus enters the blood, and uh, we can see short term viremia. And the lymph nodes fraud, uh, the lymph nodes, the virus breaks into the blood, and we can see formation of long term viremia. The duration of disease is something about three weeks. Complication of it may, may be meningitis, encephalitis, laryngitis, ititis, tracheobronchitis, pneumonia, uh, uh, diarrhea, and hepatitis. And we can see uh, development of the infection of this light, and we can see uh, spreading of rash in some in uh, de in development of it. Morphology of misles uh, characterized by local uh, changes and general changes. Local changes associated with cataract inflammation on the mucosal membranes of the pharynx, trachea, bronchus, which is clinically manifested by runny nose, cough, and salivation. In several cases, we can see necrosis and edema of the vocal uh, cords uh, and formation of false group. Diagnostic uh, seen metaplasia of the glandular epithelium of the trachea and bronchus in the flat. Morphology of muscle, with, uh, which associated with general manifestation due to viremia, we can see formation of coplic Bielski filatov spots. On the skin, we can see exanthema, each large spot rash, hyperemia, edema, and focal infiltration of lymphocytes. In the epidermis, we can see vacuolar dystrophy with uh, subsequent filling. And specific manifestation in the organs of immunogenesis of the lung, we can see gigant cells. Photo of a typical patient. One more. You can see it fill out of dots. A lot of spots here and here. And you can see some spots in the mucous membrane here. And you can see typical uh, formation like this formation of special Nigion cells. Complications of the massless uh, are. Necrotic bronchiolitis, uh, cortical encephalitis, the cause is uh, vasculitis. Red gangrene of the neck, uh, of a cheek or uh, perineum, uh, and the development of noma or water cancer. I will show you some uh, disgusting photo. Uh, the cause of death is more often false group and pulmonary complications and asphyxia. On this slide, we may see noma of cheek, and we can see a really big area of necrosis. One more photo with noma. It's a really deep uh, injury and really big area of necrosis. And one more. So, thank you for your attention, and goodbye.